Hello everyone, this is The Astro Geek Comics where I talk about astronomy and space science through my fondness for art. If you would enjoy sci art comics based on astronomy and space sciences, you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is at the rate The Astro Geek Comics. In this fourth video of the series titled Astronomical Spectroscopy, I shall talk about how spectroscopy has allowed us to calculate the movements of stars, planets, and galaxies. The wonderful power of this tool comes out in the number of groundbreaking discoveries it has been applied to. In the past videos, I have talked about waves, spectroscopy, types of spectrums, and their use in identifying chemicals present in different bodies. You may watch these videos on my channel. To begin with, I would ask you to imagine that you are a source of waves. At this moment, it is of no significance to determine the nature of waves, whether they are longitudinal waves like sound or transverse waves like light. In this scenario, please imagine that you are holding one end of a rope whose other end is tied to a wall and hence cannot move. You swing the rope up and down the main position or left and right to it. Doing this, you should observe troughs and crests of the wave formed moving towards the stationary or the tide end. This is the wave coming out of you. Right now, when you are not moving, the wave appears in its actual form. And if you assume that you are swinging at a constant rate, this wave has an unchanging wavelength and frequency. And it shall be perceived like that to an observer who we assume is the wall or more precisely at the end of the rope tied to the wall, receiving your waves. Now, let's assume that you run towards the observer while you keep swinging at the exact same rate. Since you are moving in the direction of the wave towards the observer, because of your velocity, you compress the waves in the direction of their propagation. The troughs and crests come closer to each other. This would have the effect that the observer will receive a wave with closer troughs and crest than the original wave which means that the wavelength of the wave has reduced. As we now know that wavelength of the wave is the distance between the two consecutive throws or two consecutive crests, this wave or shorter wavelength than original has appeared to shift towards the blue end of the spectrum or the end with smaller wavelengths and is said to be blue shifted. Note that the, as the wavelength decreases, the frequency will increase as the two are related by the relation that the product is a constant, that is the speed of light in that medium. The same case of blue shift shall be noticed if you were stationary and that wall or observer were moving towards you. As they would compress the wave in doing so and detect a wave of shorter wavelength. In the second case now, imagine that you are running away from the observer or the wall. In this case, you will be running opposite to the direction of the wave going towards the observer and will actually pull the rope along as you run. This will have the effect that the distance between the troughs and the crests will get longer because of the pull. The observer will thus receive waves with longer wavelengths and hence shorter frequencies due to the motion of the source, that is you. This wave will apparently be shifted towards the red end of the spectrum or the region of longer wavelengths and is said to be red shifted. The same shall happen if you were stationary and the wall was moving away from you. It would stretch the rope and in its direction and detect a wave with longer wavelength. This shift in wavelength of frequency of the wave because of the relative motion between the source and the observer is called Doppler shift. To calculate the Doppler shift, one must have a reference wavelength to compare with the absorption wavelengths of the detected wave. For the reference spectrum, you may use the emission spectrum of an element you expect to find in the source. If the source were not moving, its spectrum would show absorption lines due to the element exactly at the wavelengths of the emission spectrum of this element. I have already discussed this in the second and third video of this series that an element's emission spectrum 
releases the same wavelengths as it absorbs in the absorption spectrum. Comparing the observed wavelength from the moving source with the laboratory wavelength of the same source when it's not moving, you can detect the shift in the wavelength. A faster moving source towards you will result in more blue shift than a slowly moving source. Similarly, a faster moving source away from you will produce more red shift than a slowly moving source. The amount of red shift is calculated by the ratio of the difference between the observed wavelength and the laboratory wavelength to the laboratory wavelength or lambda observation minus lambda lab divided by lambda lab. This red shift is equal to the ratio of velocity of the source to the speed of light that is c. If the up difference above is negative, the wave is actually blue shifted and the source is moving towards you. In the case of a positive difference, it is red shifted and moving away. We discussed the appearance of spectrums of stars in our previous videos. It looks like a continuous bell curve reaching maximum at a certain wavelength. The height of the bell curve at any wavelength represents the intensity of energy being released at that wavelength. The continuous curve is superimposed with sharp dips at particular frequencies which shows the absorption lines of elements. In a red shifted or blue shifted spectrum, these lines are equally shifted towards the red or the blue end by an amount that depends on the velocity respectively. For example, in a galaxy moving at a speed of 53,680 km per second, we will see a difference in the observed and measured wavelength of 0.105 nanometers for the D2 line of sodium which normally occurs at 588.995 nanometers but will now show at 589.1 nanometers. Similarly, shifts in other absorption lines can also be calculated to find the speed. Edwin Hubble, the great astronomer, established that the so-called nebulae then were actually galaxies outside the Milky Way using the Cepheid variable stars to calculate the distances also used the Lowell Observatory Telescope and found that the universe is expanding. By measuring the redshift or blue shift of the galaxies, he found that most of them were redshifted, which meant an expanding or inflating universe. Some of which are closer to us, but a very small part of the whole are moving towards us due to our gravitational pull like the Andromeda galaxy. He used the redshift to calculate the velocities of these moving galaxies and his work was actually the extension of the work by the astronomer Vesto Slipher. What Hubble found out was actually groundbreaking and laid the seeds for inflation that the farther a particular galaxy was, the faster it appeared to move away from us. Hence, the universe was not just expanding at a constant speed, but in fact accelerating. This relation of velocity of galaxies and the distance is called the Hubble-Lematter law. According to the current value of Hubble's constant, the velocity of galaxies increases 70 km per second per megaparsec. One parsec is equal to 3.26 light years. The Andromeda galaxy currently 2.5 million light years away from us, is going to merge with the Milky Way in 4.5 billion years. The same concept of motion of galaxies can be used to detect the motion of stars with respect to us. This can only be used for stars moving radially to us. But proper motion in which stars move across our line of sight with distance remaining the same cannot be detected using the spectra. Proper motion though can be detected by observing the shift in the position of a star in the Earth's sky over years. The stars do not move according to the Hubble's law, but do obey the rule of Doppler shift which can be used to calculate their motions. Stars in binary systems can be detected by studying their spectra. As the two objects move around their common center of gravity, they will appear to move towards the observer and then away from them when seen radially. Thus, for one part of the orbit, their spectra will be blue shifted and 
for the other part of the orbit when they are moving away from us it will be red shifted the period of these shifts can help us determine their period of revolution and hence the dynamics of the system this is especially helpful when one of the stars is very dim red dwarf brown dwarf or even a neutron star or a black hole the movement of the visible partner can help us determine the gravitational force and hence the mass and size of the sister star which leads us to understanding its nature better multiple star systems can also be detected using the same technique using this technique the first known binary star system of mizar a star in the ursa major constellation was discovered in the year 1890 The Doppler shift can also be used to detect star rotation rates when it is hard to use surface features of the distant stars to calculate their rotation rates. The effect of a star's rotation on its spectra or spectral lines of absorption is to broaden them. But how does it happen? Well, it's simple. One side of the star is moving towards us as it rotates and the other side is moving away due to rotation. The side moving towards us causes the lines to blue shift while the side moving away from us causes the lines to red shift. At the same time we are receiving radiation from the middle part of the star which with respect to us is not appearing to move and hence the radiation from this part will not show any shift due to rotation. Since stars appear as tiny objects the spectra from blue shifted end the middle end and the red shifted end arrive together as a single radiation and the combined effect of this is to give a broadened appearance to the spectral lines the broadening is directly proportional to the rotational velocity using this we have detected many fast rotators the fastest being denebola a star in the leo constellation to know more about these interesting fast rotator stars you can check my comic on instagram The observed broadening of the spectral lines will also depend on the tilt of the rotational axis with respect to us. The concept of Doppler shift has also been used to detect exoplanets. Similar to binary systems, in principle a planet orbiting around a star also makes the star move around the common center of gravity. Usually this center of gravity lies inside the star itself. as the planets are very small compared to the stars and hence the motion of the star is not very apparent but in those special cases when the star involved is small like a red dwarf and the orbiting planet is comparable to jupiter or more in that case the center of gravity may lie a bit outside the star and the radial motion of the star and the planet around the common center of gravity can be detected by observing doppler shifts in the spectra of the star as it orbits around the center of gravity using the same maths of binary systems if the mass of the second object is found very low to be a star the detection of an exoplanet can be ascertained thank you for watching this video and please do not forget to like the video and follow the astrogeek comics by clicking on the subscribe button below If you want to be notified when I upload my next videos you may also click on the bell icon in case of suggestions for future series or videos or your thoughts on this one you can also comment those below I would love to read them remember you are the real MVPs whose support keeps me motivated to make more educational videos on astronomy and space science the comic numbers of my instagram comics mentioned by me in this video are mentioned in the description of the video below until next time stay curious and keep looking up